Hello, Trinity Tigers. Welcome to the Learning Together live webinar series as part of a lifelong learning series. We are excited to feature a wonderful conversation with the recipients of the 2021 Distinguished Alumni Award and the Spirit of Trinity Award. I am Allison Hawk, class of 88 and a parent of a class of 2019. Trinity's Office of Alumni Relations has invited me to moderate tonight's webinar. I teach sports management at Trinity and I'm a director on the Trinity National Alumni Board. I also am the founder of AHC Consulting that provides strategic communications, planning, training, and facilitation services, and I'm based in St. Louis, as is one of our speakers, Aisha Sultan. It's an added pleasure to moderate tonight's webinar because I'm pr a proud recipient of the 2020 Spirit of Trinity Award. We often do great things and wonder, where did I learn that? What helped me become who I am now? We all struggle with vulnerability to varying degrees, but how did I learn to respect my identity and express myself and what I really think? As a member of the alumni community, you know Trinity professors are caring but tough. They challenge students to bring out their best every day. But how do you continue to be your best once you graduate? In what ways does Trinity propel you forward after you have left the university? I believe we'll find answers to these and other similar questions as I engage in conversation with the distinguished panelists this evening. And I wanna introduce you to the various panels, panelists that we have tonight. They are Aisha Sultan, class of 96, and Parent, class of 25, who is the recipient of the 2021 Distinguished Alumni Award, Phil Wetz, class of 73, and Parent, class of 11, recipient of the 2021 Spirit of Trinity Award. Their two favorite professors are here. They are Dr. Susan Siavoshi and the Cox Chapman Professor of International Relations and Dr. Dick Burr, Professor Emeritus of Business Administration at Trinity University. And uh, the, uh, the business school people are in their own area in the, in the library. So for those of you who are familiar with the, that, those downstairs areas, they've become very high tech. And they are, they're coming to us almost like they're coming from a, from a television station. Naturally, Aisha and Phil's favorite professors were super excited with their recognition by the university. And they are certainly curious to hear directly from Aisha and Phil what led them to get this far in their life. So first, I would like to ask Professor Siavochi to take the stage with Aisha and have a conversation and learn a little bit about their journey as they've gone forward in life and all the wonderful accomplishments that Aisha has had as a journalist throughout the country and based in St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, well, thank you, Alison. This is a uh, wonderful occasion. I'm so happy to see all of you, but particularly Aisha, her beautiful face and uh, lovely and warm smile. Uh, so I would like to ask you a few questions and see uh, and, and, and hear your responses. One, one of the questions that I have is um, for you to tell us whether you had some transformative experiences at Trinity and if you did, how did they impact, uh, impacted your life? Um, well, it's such a pleasure to be in conversation with a woman I admire so much, um, just, your intellect, your expertise, and uh, also your warmth and your compassion, I think are, um, it, it's the type of professor that I would wanna be if, if, if you know I was still teaching. I mean, I, I do some adjunct teaching, but it's also the type of experience I want my daughter to have as a student there with professors in relationship with professors like you. So, um, so to answer your question, there are two experiences that come to mind immediately. Um, one was the exposure to and deep relationships with people who came from totally different backgrounds, thought differently, and whom I had grown up with a different um, understanding of what that culture or experience might be like. So for example, one of my best friends was from a Hindu family and I grew up in a Pakistani Muslim family. And um, my parents' families were part of partition, which was a very traumatic experience in the separation of uh, India and Pakistan. And so I think in getting to know someone on a personal level um, that way, it broke down a lot of 
perhaps perhaps um, biases or a historical perspective that I had only been given from one from one viewpoint, which is a very valid viewpoint, but it allowed me to see the world in a broader way and also to engage with someone who came from a totally different viewpoint in a geopolitical context, but also with a personal relationship there. And I think that's something that's so missing in the world right now is if we had more relationships with people who thought differently, grew up differently, understood the world differently um, in a way that came from a place of respect. So Trinity was my first experience with that type of conversation. Um, and the secondly, everything I was learning theoretically in classrooms and the way that my professors were helping me understand the world and society, I was learning in a practical way and applying in a practical way in the Trinitonian. And I think that being able to be in a small liberal arts campus where you think and write and learn and read and engage with peers and teachers, but then you get experiences, hands-on experiences like I did at the Trinitonian were completely transformative for my life and for me as a person. That's great. And, and you carry that with you and, uh, and it sort of impacted your life, right? Absolutely. It changed the whole yeah, direction of my yeah, life. That's wonderful. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a few words about the, your favorite classes uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the one that were most beneficial to you and your career. Okay, so I think it's, there's a difference between those. So I always said that if you want to be a journalist or you want to learn a craft, like a technical craft, there are places you can go and things you can do and internships and work that you can do to learn how to do a technical skill and craft. Right. Um, but if you want to learn or if you want the experience of engaging with the difficult questions of why is the world the way that it is on a micro and macro level, uh, how do I understand what's happening in my community, in my country, in the world at large, uh, what does it mean to live a good life? What does it mean to be a productive member of society? Like these are the questions that you confront with a liberal arts education. And, um, and I was blessed to uh, study social sciences. I studied sociology and international studies. Uh, I took a course with you and one thing that I, an assignment I'll never forget from your course. I mean, I think I took a few classes with you, but you had us follow a country in conflict from the start of the semester by subscribing to a periodical um, and reading everything in that periodical about that country for the entire semester and then writing a, a research paper, a, a summation sort of paper about what we learned and also as a way that it was covered. So here's the thing, I'm a journalist and I had no idea I would become a journalist but I was deeply curious and interested in what was happening in the world. And that assignment gave me a way not to just track something that was happening, but also to think about why is it being covered the way that it is? Why is this newsworthy? How is this relevant to the audience here? How do you get people in America to care about what's happening in Bosnia and Herzegovina? And then also, uh, I mean, it was such an important assignment and to get into the habit of reading global news every day. Um, my God, I wish like, I wish all students had to do something like that, you know? Um, it, so I, it created a habit of mind, a habit of practice for me. And it also impacted me emotionally because I cared deeply about this genocide that was happening in Bosnia. You cared about it. You cared about my feelings. You validated the emotional crisis I felt following that as it was unfolding and feeling like, why isn't the world intervening? And helping me understand why the world might not be intervening. Um, I just am really grateful for you for um, structuring that assignment that way. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other classes that uh, it benefited you, but, but let's move on a little bit uh, and, and, and talk about, not, 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 move on, not move away from Trinity, but you've studied and you have actually taught at many universities, Chicago, uh, Michigan, you know, Washington University. What sets Trinity apart from all these uh, uh, universities and institutions that you have uh, close familiarity with? Right. So, I mean, I love, I love higher education. I love being on campuses. Um, I, I hope I get, I mean, it's like a privilege to be part of a 
intellectual community that it is, it is an honor and a privilege and it's very exciting to be in a place that challenges you. And so um, I think what set, what set Trinity apart from me was this sense that I was cared for and cared about and that people who I respected and looked up to believed in me. And honestly, that is an extremely powerful thing. You know, um, I, I just can't underestimate or overstate how for a young person, especially for a young woman of color who'd grown up in predominantly white spaces, um, to feel like what I have to say matters, is important, has value. Um, and not to say that I didn't experience that at any of the other institutions I was at, I did, but um, I was also more confident in who I had become. And I think that being in a place like Trinity allowed me to develop the competencies, the confidence, uh, the skills, um, the habits of mind, the practices that I needed um, to continue to grow as a scholar and thinker. You're a wonderful ambassador for Trinity. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I'm, well. So happy. I'm so happy that my daughter goes there. I mean, I yeah, I was going to say, and now your daughter is here. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Asha, it's, it's, uh, I know that uh, our minutes are up probably, yeah. Alison, is that right? Yeah. And But it was wonderful to hear your stories and the way you think about Trinity and what it meant to you. And I'm very glad that your daughter is here and hopefully I will meet her soon. Yes. Thank you, Alison, to you. Thank you so much for the reflections that you all have had. I think that one of the things that is so exciting is how you reflect on the experience after years and years and how it has evolved in your, in, your, in your conversation. And one of the things that I think is really important from the standpoint of looking at it is, it's not just about the social sciences, it's about the experiential opportunities that you had even back in those days when perhaps there were less internships, perhaps there were less opportunities, but to have that kind of practical caring assignment that, that like catalyzed you into the global world is really, really an opportunity. Now I wanna to turn to um, our, our business school folks because um, that's another very unique perspective. And I wanna introduce, it's time to hear a conversation between Phil Webbs and his favorite professor, Dr. Burr, um, both in the, in the sort of in the business world and the business school. And I'd like to have an opportunity to introduce uh, Phil as a, a, a recent award recipient. And I had the opportunity to hear his story and was really amazed by, by that. And I want to have uh, turn it over to you all to, to talk a little bit about your experiences at Trinity. Thank you very much and good evening to everyone. Phil and I have a, an anniversary coming up. Bill was a student of mine 50 years ago. I know that's for hard for people to believe, but it is true. In August of this year, it will be 50 years. And Bill was a student in two of my courses at that time. And I had the good fortune also to have Bill's brother, Andy Later, and his daughter, Allison, even later than that. So I have had a wonderful, wonderful time with at least three of the Wetses, and I get to know others as well, which has been really my pleasure. Just to give you some idea about 1972, 1972, the cost of a first class stamp was eight cents, <laughs> eight cents. Dozen eggs, 52 cents. So Phil's been through a lot of things, as, as you can see. Phil submitted a set of questions that uh, he wanted me to ask him. And so I will adhere to those questions and certainly at times may uh, add some of the comments that he might make, see if I can help on that. First question for you, Phil, how did you choose Trinity to continue your education after high school? Well, before I answer, I just wanna thank Dick for making this an open book quiz uh, where I knew the test questions before they were submitted because his tests were really challenging. Um, when I was looking at colleges beginning in 1968, let's just say the college recruitment and selection process was vastly different from
from today. Uh, I was the first person in my family to go to college. So my parents really weren't in a position to provide any guidance, but they provided great assistance because we were fortunate in the little church that we attended to have a Trinity professor by the name of Dr. Hugo Bordeaux, who was a sociology professor. And so my parents went up one Sunday and asked him if he could help me learn something about Trinity. So he very graciously invited me to spend the morning on campus. There weren't campus tours in those days. They weren't weekends at Trinity, none of that. So I came on campus, I attended a couple of classes, but the really critical thing he did was he invited me to lunch with a couple of other faculty members. And that's where I first discovered what the Trinity family was all about, because those professors, including Dr. Bordeaux, gave me the impression that they sincerely were interested in me and my future and the chance for me to develop what gifts I had. And that gave me one of the great lessons in my life is when you're evaluating whether it's a church to join, an organization to volunteer with, an organization to go to work for, look at the quality of the people within that organization. And that's how I made my decision to attend Trinity. Uh, I was also accepted at a much more prestigious university in Houston called Rice University, but it was the feeling that I had of a family unit at Trinity that led me to set foot on the Skyline campus. You are also glad to came. <laughs> Thank you. I am too. What is the greatest impact your time at Trinity as a student has had on your life? Well, my answer is going to be somewhat repetitive to the one we heard previously. Um, but I will confess I came to Trinity as a young person uh, with little self-confidence, little self-esteem, and with not much in the way of ambition. And I met wonderful people like this gentleman sitting on my right, who not only affirmed the work that I did, but they began to plant seeds that it was possible for me to continue my education beyond Trinity. And you and George Thompson in particular, two business school professors, began to talk to me about getting my MBA. And my natural reaction was MBAs were offered at Trinity at the time, and I should just continue at Trinity. And they said, no, Phil, you need to go spread your wings. You need to go study with different people, get different viewpoints. And so you convinced me because my immediate reaction was, there's no way I have the money to do this. And they, you convinced me there was financial aid, there were ability to work, to earn money. And so I went ahead and applied and I know George Thompson spent hours behind the scenes convincing the people at Tulane University to give me a generous financial aid package. The other part of that equation was on graduation weekend, I married a wonderful woman who is still my wife after nearly 49 years. And she worked for the two years I was getting my MBA at the Tulane Law School. She started uh, with the lofty salary of $2.25 an hour. I still have our budget from 1974, our first year, full year of marriage. I still have our tax return from that year, so I can prove it. Uh, but we lived on that modest amount. But that uh, affirmation and that encouragement forced me to consider other alternatives, and they completely transformed our lives. Bill, thanks for mentioning George Thompson. Oh, what George a great was a, had a wonderful effect on so many, many he students. Did. And I can proudly say that he was a student of mine as well, not at Trinity, but before he came to Trinity. Just a great man. Next question. Of all your experiences <clears throat> in Trinity, which ones are the most memorable? Well, my answer is going to be a little bit different because I have always said when we used to encourage young people to consider Trinity, that your experiences and your learning outside the classroom were as important as those inside the classroom. So I don't want to diminish what inside the classroom was, but the things I have clung to are things like um, Sunday morning worship in the chapel, Trinity, 
uh, listening to Raymond Judd, the chaplain emeritus at Trinity, every Sunday uh, was such an important foundational portion of the faith that I still carry. Uh, Raymond and his wife, Mary Jane, have been friends for nearly 55 years, and they have been with us during the high points and the low points of our lives. And I, I can never say enough great things about those experiences. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I was blessed to be part of a very small informal prayer group. We met once a week. Um, it was not sponsored by any faculty member. It was just us coming together to pray and to share the challenges we were facing in our lives. And that was really the first time I experienced the beauty of Christian fellowship with peers. As I said, I went to a small church, really wasn't a youth group. And I can remember telling my mother as I was about to graduate how much I was gonna miss the Christian fellowship I experienced on this campus. And she encouraged me, she says, just keep looking and you'll find it. And it has been one of the greatest blessings uh, in my life. So I have to confess that meeting my wife, uh, we met in another statistics class. And uh, I always said that uh, my wife fell in love with me as I did regression analysis without the assistance of a computer or a calculator. And so that was a great experience. And then I have to tell the story uh, of our wedding and my graduation weekend. Um, this was in uh, May of 1973. And this wonderful man sitting on my right and his wife invited my wife-to-be to spend the night in their lovely home, which was close to campus, because they wanted her to have a great night of sleep and to be fully rested to enjoy her wedding day. But they didn't stop there. They invited me to breakfast, to have breakfast with my wife on our wedding day. And Pat fixed just a beautiful breakfast. And it was that type of caring that uh, continues to touch my heart is it is one of the greatest gifts that Linda and I have ever received and we remain grateful to this day. Thank you, thank you. And we'll never forget it as well. <clears throat> Do you have any suggestions you'd like to offer to listeners based on your experiences at Trinity? Well, and, and elsewhere. <laughs> a couple come to mind. Uh, obviously identify the passions in your life and Prepare yourself not only while you're at Trinity, but continue to be a lifelong learner. Uh, my personal passions uh, have evolved into being caring for and serving others. And so when I uh, left the workforce, I, uh, I took training to be one, a Stephen minister, that was 50 hours of training. And I took training to be a uh, hospital chaplain, a lay hospital chaplain. And even though I've been doing that now for 12 years, I still am learning. I still am going to others who are involved in similar activities and gaining insights as to the unique experiences people might have that uh, are challenges in their lives. And the last thing I'd say is that um, I learned at Trinity that every day you need to work on developing yourself mentally emotionally, spiritually, and physically. All four of those I have found are important if you are to, to do what your passion calls you to do, because you have to be your best in all those areas in your life. Thank you. Since you still are involved with Trinity and have been since you graduated, <clears throat> what has changed about the Trinity experience and what's remained the same? Well, I was walking over here and I was just reminded, oh my gosh, this is, I mean, the campus was beautiful when I was here in 69 to 73, but it is now spectacular. I mean, all of the new build, the science and innovation building, renovation of Chapman, Halsell renovation, the new Dickey building, the new Norfolk Hall. And, you know, before I came here this afternoon, I ran on the lower campus around the soccer field that didn't exist when I was here. And so the campus has just been transformed in such beautiful ways. Um, immediately before I came here, I also attended a portion of a dinner that's being held tonight to honor those who have endowed scholarships for students who need financial aid. And I just, I just get excited every year when I go 
to know how generous the Trinity family has been in allowing other young people to have the experience to come here and have, as our prior speaker said, the transformational experience of, of coming here. And then the, uh, the things that have stayed the same, you mentioned my daughter, Allison, and uh, during her four years here, I, I really fell in love with the school all over again. Allison had started out and declared herself as an economics major, but in her sophomore year, she took an elective class in uh, geology, and she absolutely fell in love with that discipline. And I can remember her calling me one day, says, Dad, I've got to change my major. I said, you can't do that. It's too late. She says, no, Dad, I've gone to the geoscience department. They said that we can make it work. And guess what? I can still graduate in four years. So I'll graduate within your budget. And they worked with Allison and she remains passionate about that field. And so I fell in love with Trinity all over again. And that has, that has remained the same because I define the Trinity family as one that helps every member of that family grow and develop to be the person that God meant them to be. And it happened with me and I've seen it happen with Dylan. One more, one more question. Business administration is regarded quite frequently at other universities as a very singular area where students do not learn about things outside the confines of finance, accounting, et cetera. Right. And my question is, have you been able to apply the liberal arts oh, education gosh. that you have received from Trinity? In spades. You know, I started off as a financial analyst for a major financial corporation. So it was highly quantitative. I had always enjoyed the quantitative kind of work, but I was blessed to be in a company that rotated you through uh, various assignments. So I used all of my financial and quantitative skills through the beginning of my career. And then I went into something completely different. I went into public affairs, which included media relations, government relations, community relations, uh, communications for employees. So I used all of these so-called soft skills that I also got at Trinity because of all the writing we had to do, the presentations we had to make. And so I got to use the full gamut of, of those skills. And I will say the others that I learned by observing people like you and George Thompson were interpersonal skills. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they give courses on interpersonal relations, but I think they ought to. I was blessed to observe great role models like you and George. And I realized that if you were gonna be a leader in an organization, you needed to walk the talk, that you needed to treat people with integrity. And because that's what both of you did and you need to care about your people. Mm -hmm. And so that was not an official class, but I had professors teach me leading by example. What a wonderful privilege for me to have oh, this opportunity. Thank you, Dave. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. That is uh, inspiring. And one of the things that I think is so amazing about a Trinity education is that through the generations, we don't have to be told what to say. We just say what's on our hearts. And, and, and there's so, so many common themes, the theme of caring, the theme of extended family, the theme of meeting people who are different than you and then finding your own why, right? In this, right. Uh, in, this in this world. And all three of us have a commonality that we have, we've had children who, uh, who are attending or have attended and to fall in love with the school and see it in a whole new way is, is just, it's, it's such a gift. It's just such a, it's such a great thing. So I want to uh, uh, just kind of summarize the things that I heard based upon what you all said is just being that lifelong learner, being adaptable and kind of using that, that very incredible network of Trinity skills, but also a Trinity from all generations and, and the open doors and the loose ties that you have with uh, the common experience that you had at Trinity really is, uh, is, is a very significant part of what, what we've all gotten. And I, we can be in St. Louis and meet Trinity um, alum who are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and there's always some commonality. And I know that's, that's true with you all as well. So it's just lovely to hear the story and 
such a personal story. So thank you. Thank you guys for sharing that. Um, ladies and gentlemen who are who are tuning in tonight, I want to remind you that you can submit your questions using the Q&A tab. We're not using the chat function tonight. So if you put something in there, we won't necessarily see that. I just wanted to let you know that because we've got people who are, you can answer, you can ask any question to our panelists or to anyone who's uh, participating here tonight. And we're happy to answer that. So based upon the conversation that you've had an opportunity to hear, please take some time to nominate other alum who are, have done phenomenal things. We are, I'm part of the National Alumni Board and one of our charges is to help identify those people who are making outstanding contributions on behalf of our university and to see an opportunity to, to share. So please give that some thought as you think about people that you know that you went to school with or people that you now know are Trinity grads. I know I've been learning about Trinity grads who I didn't even know were Trinity grads. And that's a lot of fun. I think we're all trying to communicate more. And there's a, there's a lot of tiger pride that I think uh, I, we didn't see as much in the late 80s, I don't think. And now I just feel like there's a there's sort of a resurgence. So I think it's kind of it's kind of interesting to see. Um, you can visit the alumni awards page so you can read a description of the various categories. There's a distinguished alum award, which is uh, what Aisha received. Um, Phil and I both received the Spirit of Trinity award, which is a, a, a different award. And then we also have an award for young alum and that's a tower award. So those who've been out of school for um, less than 10 years, we have some amazing graduates who are doing some really neat things around the country. So I encourage you all to um, have an opportunity if you have a name of a person that we can follow up with to find out a little bit more information on what they're doing. And we love to have geographic diversity around the country uh, to make sure that people are recognized and other other places as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have an opportunity to see if there's any if we have any questions at this point in our in our in our question and answer area. And what I would what I would like to um, to as we're you know see if there are questions from our audience, if you all could answer a question about the the most important lesson or the most important advice you would give to to a current student in terms of how to how to access the trinity network or what to get out of trinity would be something that i would be curious for you guys to answer um, oh, sorry. Uh, sure um so i think that uh definitely take a course outside what you think your interests are when you come to campus. Um, I think I, I came to campus as a pre-med student and I was taking science classes and classes, you know, to prepare me for that. Um, and yeah, I, I love that Trinity requires you to take classes outside. You know, you, you have to have this diverse sort of set of requirements to graduate, but take a class with a professor who has a great reputation for telling, you know, for giving amazing lectures or being just a leader in their field. And uh, you might be surprised as sort of how that can change what you think you wanna do with your life. Um, I also wanna mention Dr. Michael Curl, uh, who's a professor in sociology who since passed away, who was really transformative in, um, in helping me grow as a thinker. And uh, sometimes you will meet a person like that who will change the way you see the world and understand the world. And um, Trinity is a place where that can happen and maybe not always where you expect it to happen. And another thing is um, studying abroad was really critical and important for me. I studied in Egypt and in Cairo. And at the time Trinity did not have a program there. Uh, we didn't they just said, okay, well, if you find a university there that's willing to take you for a semester, maybe we can work something out. And I think when you're at a smaller school, you can create a lot of opportunity for yourself if you have initiative and if you're willing to take risks. Um, and I know that coming out of a two-year pandemic, risks feel scary. And I know that uh, things can feel really uncertain, but you have a safety net and um, I would encourage you to do the scary thing once in a while. And going to Egypt and going all over the Middle East was, um, I'd never have the chance to do that again in my life. 
and a lot of Trinity students do get to study abroad. So, um, and then I did internships, like multiple internships. I know some of us have to work to have money <laughs> to like <laughs> pay for things it, when we're at school. Um, and we t- I had loans and I had t- several jobs when I was there and over the summers, but I always made sure that one of the things I was doing was something that I didn't care whether or not I was getting paid for because I loved it so much. Usually it was like freelancing for a newspaper or doing something like that. I mean, I had other jobs for the money, but I always made sure that I was doing one thing that was for me. It was feeding my passion and it was making me better at something. Um, So I would really, these are the years when you can just like hustle and work all the time. Um, And if you find something that doesn't really feel like work, uh, just that might be a clue as to what you're meant to do. I would just uh, build on that. And I, I had to summarize in one word, I would say explore. Explore every, this is such a great place to explore, uh, not only through coursework. I mean, I'll use kind of a silly example. I still remember taking music appreciation, a one hour course, and it introduced me to a love of music, people like Gershwin, that I would not have ever probably found. So even a silly course, uh, so-called silly course, can open up doors. And that opened up doors to my love for musical theater. And it, it's, it's now a joy that I share with my wife and my girls. Uh, mentioned doing things for which you don't get paid. Explore volunteer opportunities, different ways to serve. Just don't spend time with people who are like you. It's a chance to explore and exchange ideas with people who are different, including professors. Uh, You just have such an opportunity to discover your interests, your passions. You may be like my daughter and you may identify something you didn't know that existed within your heart and your mind. So just spend every year, set some goals for yourself in terms of what you're gonna explore every year. Thank you. We have um, a couple of questions. Dr. Burr, you were one of my favorite professors because you took the time to help me as an athlete that couldn't always be in class. Do you feel the professors still have the same consideration? And this is from Lisa Sassano, Westergaard. Yes, yes. Lisa, I remember you well. So it's so nice to hear from you. I think so. I think uh, it, it still works that way in Trinity. I think we have a good staff in the athletic area. I think the athletic director is very conscientious about students, not only participating in a particular sport or sports, but also getting a very high quality education. And I I don't think that that's changed in the, the 50 years that I would say I look back on at Trinity. I would mention that in 1972, incidentally, uh, Trinity won the national NCAA Division I tennis championship. Yes. That was a free gift as for Lisa as well. She was not on the team, but <laughs> the athletes at, at Trinity were wonderful to have as students. Yeah. No one who was here during that time will ever remember the dual match when the University of Southern California came and played on the upper campus courts. And uh, we were, we were, they were the number one of the top teams in the country and Trinity won that day. And it was one of the most exciting things that I think has ever happened on this campus. And Lisa, I, I teach in the sports management area and now we have a sports management area in our university. And I have many athletes in the course that I teach and we are extremely accommodating in our area. And I know that other professors are as well. So that's a, that was a great question. I see that Andy Wetz wants to say hello, Dr. Burr. So <laughs> I, <am Andy. laughs> nice I think nice you might know him. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> and I also would like to say that both Bill and Andy made A's in business <laughs> statistics. So did their daughter. Her daughter. Phil's yeah, daughter. Bill, that right, Bill, right, right. But yes, I'm so glad to hear from Andy. Thank you. Excellent. Um, I see we have a question from Sean Thomas, or actually more of a, a comment and a question. 
John says, as wonderful as Trinity was as a learning environment, its location in San Antonio meant that there were tremendous learning opportunities in the community. What did our speakers find and enjoy about the world off campus in San Antonio? And Sean is, is, a, is a St. Louis, uh, based in St. Louis, an alum of uh, class of 88, as I am as well. Thanks, Sean, for the question. Appreciate it. Hi, Sean. That's a great question. So my freshman year, I got involved with TUVAC. Um, with, I, I don't even remember what, like the Trinity University Volunteer Action Committee or Coalition. I don't remember the exact name, but um, I signed up for a mentorship program with a school um, in San Antonio, and we would go maybe every week. And I was mentoring a, a elementary, middle school age, young girl, we do homework together, just talk and whatever. But um, it was a chance for me to be involved in the community. But also, um, like you said earlier, to feel like part of something bigger than myself. And that's, I mean, that's something that I think Trinity attracts students who want to be part of something bigger and want to give back. Um, to the world and be of service to the world. But uh, sometimes you don't know how to do that. And so by having that relationship, and I did alternative spring break where we went and volunteered for a week. And each time it was like at a Head Start program or an educational type, early education type uh, program in different places. And you know what? I ended up being an educational reporter for 10 years. And I never took a single education class at Trinity, <clears throat> but I think that experience of being in the schools in the San Antonio public schools and caring about someone, caring about the future of someone who was in those schools made me care about public education, urban education in this country as a young person that I've carried without me through my entire life. And now the documentary I'm working on is about um, a mother who has kids in the St. Louis public schools and the East St. Louis public schools and about their challenges they faced during the pandemic. Um, it's just something I'm really passionate about. And I never took a single course there, except I volunteered and I mentored in the San Antonio public schools for years. And Aisha's being very modest. She is a, um an internationally known columnist and also now filmmaker. And she writes on parenting issues. She writes on the toughest issues facing our country at this time. And I just wanna give her the shout out because um, I know that those experiences influenced you. It's like being collectors of experiences, which I believe most Trinity students are back in the day and now. Um, you, you know, there was a movie Slumdog Millionaire years ago. And what I remember most about that movie is he always knew the answer because he'd had an experience that gave him an insight, right? So your, your, what you've explained and what Phil's explained and what others have explained, I think, is kind of the essence of that, of, of that Trinity experience. It's, you don't know when it's going to help you, but you know that it did. And Sean, probably you have stories that you could share as well. Well, I'll, I'll share a couple of stories. Um, as, as was this, uh, Aisha mentioned, uh, in my freshman year, uh, TUVAC didn't exist, but I did volunteer with a program called Big Brothers. And I think it really planted the seed uh, that I would uh, begin to cultivate, if you will, after I retired uh, of working with young people, uh, mainly through our church. I taught fourth grade Sunday school for about 10 years, and I continue to work with the youth in our church. So again, I think that was a seed that was planted at Trinity. And then the other thing I'd mention in terms of continuing to be a part of the Trinity family, when I was on the board of visitors, we were looking for a service project. And we came up with the idea of honoring and thanking the wage workers at Trinity the people who make this place such a fantastic place to be and do all those things that keep it looking great and functioning so well. And we had a, a thank you, an appreciation breakfast for them. And I had the great privilege of spending time listening to them talk passionately about their love for Trinity University, as passionately as you've heard the two people talk tonight. And so it's just not the students. It's the, again, it's the broader Trinity family who carry that passion about this very special place. 
Uh, may, I, may I say something here uh, to the question, although it's a little bit um, uh, unorthodox, so to speak, and uh, that is that San Antonio as a bicultural uh, city provide tremendous amount of talents and Trinity in, invites them. It's just not that we send the student out, we also bring the city in and uh, through uh, music, through or lecture series, uh, through uh, bringing, for example, a high school student. So there is, there, is, there is a symbiotic relationship and there is a relationship that is not just send the student out and that's a big part of it as Aisha and Phil both spoke about, but it's also bring the city into, San, into Trinity. Trinity used to have the reputation of being in the bubble. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's true really anymore. And uh, uh, so there are lots of different opportunities uh, that provide not just San Antonio, but also the world. We have, we bring uh, a Fulbright student from Germany. Uh, well, uh, I shall uh, talk about the uh, study abroad and that is very important, but it's also important for uh, our university to, to that others from outside to have exposure to uh, Trinity, to Texas, to San Antonio and to United States. So there is a, there is a great deal of those kind of, uh, of programs and opportunities that exist. I have a, a comment in the chat um, from David Lopez. Dr. Burr, when I was at Trinity, 71 to 75, I greatly appreciated that you would send me students who needed tutoring and statistics coming from a financially challenged family who could not assist me to a large extent for my educational expenses. Your referrals allowed me to do so. For this, I will always be grateful. Additionally, I was privileged and honored to meet both Philip and Andy Letts who have become lifelong friends. Thank you, David. That's really nice. Thanks, David. Thank you. I, I wanted to say that I think it's wonderful that Trinity um, paid students back when I was there to, uh, it was a campus job to be able to write for the Trinitonian because I had to have a work study job. Um, and otherwise I would never have walked into that office if it had to, if I wasn't able to work at the same time. So back then, um, I was able to be a reporter and editor and get my weekly work study money from it. And it taught me how to uh, do my life's work. I think we have time for one last question before we before we wrap up now. If there are any other questions, I'm gonna pause for a moment. I'm gonna ask one last question and then myself. What was something that you failed at at Trinity and how do you reflect on that now? Um, I came very close to failing calculus. <laughs> <laughs> like passed it by the skin of my teeth and a lot of like begging and pleading of um of the professor who was teaching it um and that was also a good clue that perhaps I was not meant to be on the pre-med path is after I took calculus there um I would say I also failed um not knowing how to write and being able to complete a large a long um a long research paper, like 20 pages plus, and how to balance um, the demands of like many classes at one time that had were very demanding and had tremendous uh, like seminar classes for seniors. I remember my junior, senior year, I was taking like 18 hours. My classes were, I was double major, double minor, I was like working on campus. I mean, I had, I don't think I had all, I had so many balls in the air and I think some of them definitely dropped and my grades could certainly have been better that semester and maybe the next semester. And I do remember feeling like, I don't know how to do this, but I don't know how to ask for help. And I'm embarrassed because 
uh, I feel like I should know how to do this by now. And if, if I admit that I don't know how to do this, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I don't belong here. Maybe I'm not smart enough. Um, a lot of imposter syndrome feelings. And um, those are important lessons to learn because you're going to need to be able to ask for help the rest of your life if you want to do great things. And you're going to have to get very comfortable with saying, I don't know how to do this. Can someone show me or help me or teach me or guide me? And um, I ended up learning how to write a research paper when I actually had to teach a class in which I had to assign a research paper. And I thought to myself, you know, and I encourage my students to like ask for help in multiple places in multiple ways. Um, and I just think that like, uh, you know, I, I wish I had had the confidence to, to not feel like I was a personal failure just because I didn't know how to do something, you know? There were lots of things I didn't know. There were lots of things I didn't even, I didn't know what I didn't know at that age, right? Uh, and that's a gift of education is it opens your eyes to what you, what you don't know. <laughs> so I will say those were two big things that I failed at, at Trinity. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bill, how about you? Well, I'm amazed at the uh, parallel nature of our journeys. Uh, because I came to Trinity thinking that I wanted to study to become a social worker. And I took, you know, the usual introductory classes. And wow, I just, uh, it, it just didn't touch me. Just didn't, I just didn't connect with it. And I did not know, and I didn't have the confidence to ask for help as to how to plan a journey and a path to get there. So I took a different path. I don't regret taking a different path because when I left the corporate world, really, if I look at the last 12 years of my life since I've done that, I really am doing social work now. And so I'm finally cultivating that passion that I had and I'm still figuring out how to do it, but it's been some of the most rewarding time in my life. But again, I didn't have enough confidence or courage to ask for the help that I needed because I didn't know how to make it happen. Thank you, Phil. And I know based upon what you, what you have done in your career, a lot of it is about the social work and so forth, even in the community relations and all the communications world, because that's the, that's the world that I know as well. So, so that's really great and, and wonderful to hear all those things. Is there anything you guys have like, you know, sort of final thoughts any of you have on uh, just words of wisdom, things that, 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 that our audience would like to hear as far as what's your life advice? Well, I don't have life advice, but I do have a few final thoughts. Um, I feel like in our country and in Texas, higher education, education in general is under attack in really dangerous and um, ways that threaten our democracy and threaten our our future in this country. And I think Trinity students and our faculty should be um, on the forefront of fighting those attacks and fighting back and having a voice and being a part of protecting academic freedom conversations, academic, you know, just, I hope that our university and our students are going to be part of the um, fight for academic freedom in this country. I guess mine would be based on uh, some of the training I've had after I left the corporate world. And if I would summarize in one word, the most important thing I've learned, it is to listen and to listen actively. That doesn't mean you listen while you're formulating what your next thoughts are gonna be, but you're truly 100% focused on what that other person has to say even if it's words and thoughts that you don't necessarily agree with, to listen in a respectful way. And I just feel like we need to do that so much more in our world today. And it takes a lot of practice and a lot of listening. I wish I had developed that skill much, much earlier in my life. Thank you. Those are, those are really good closeouts as we, as we finish up the seminar. I wanted to um, 
just make some some last minute remarks. I know that um, we'd like to remind those who are on this that we are always looking for wonderful people to be part of um, the awards program. And so they're going to share that information so we can all have an opportunity to drop that in or you can drop into the chat or you can contact any of us with people that we need to discover. And I, I know I see that, that, um, that Lisa has dropped something into the chat that uh, Dr. Burr, you continue to influence. Uh, she just had a student uh, come to see her yesterday who might end up transferring to Trinity and your influence is continuing to, uh, to uh, influence her in a positive way. So I just wanted to make sure that you, that you heard that as well. But please do uh, look at an opportunity to nominate your fellow Alum, the St. Louis chapter nominated Aisha Sultan because she's an exemplary leader in our community, but also throughout the country. And so it was really a great honor to, to put all of our names on, on that. So we encourage you out there um, who are in different areas of the country to identify those people because we often, we don't know. A tree falls in a forest and we don't hear it. We don't, we don't know that they're there. So I hope you all have enjoyed tonight's webinar. It's been a great opportunity to have a conversation and here are some really good words of wisdom from people from multi-generations, different places and different parts of the country. And I hope that you think uh, carefully about the opportunities that Trinity offers as, as it relates to um, Trinity together and the work that the department does in order to connect all of us and provide learning experiences and connections with other, other alum, both in our own cities and virtually. The pandemic certainly has made things different, but what I will say is that I think that we have more robust programming and opportunities than we have had before in the past as university, as other uh, associations and so forth, and we can take advantage of those things. So I hope that you will have the opportunity. I know that the next webinar is scheduled for Wednesday, April 27th, and it's titled Beyond the Classroom, an Insider View of Faculty Research, The Power of Memories and Music. So uh, perhaps that would be of interest to some of our people today. I know some of people have, Phil, I know you talked about music and the class that you perhaps took when you were at Trinity. So I want to thank you all. And I know that those, those pieces of information will be coming as we go. But the lifelong learning, the opportunity to share the spirit of curiosity and uh, what goes to the generations uh, from, a Trinity, from a Trinity standpoint, there really is a spirit of Trinity. So thank you all for being here tonight and we appreciate it. And we will see you at the next webinar.